now. So you go over to Angel. You're on this show for four seasons. I'm going to ask you the question that I know you get asked a lot, but I am curious and I'm curious okay. if there's I'm any- Try to keep it fresh. Well, I mean, if there's any nuance you can add to it, because when I posted uh-huh. online and said I was going to interview you, the number one question fans of yours were asking me was what went down in season four that precipitated Cordy's exit because no one wanted it. It was like that character that everyone loved that they didn't want to see go- You know, that's such a great question. And I wish I had more insight. I only know from my point of view. I don't know what happened in the writer's room. Just recently, I've learned that the writers didn't know how to facilitate her. They didn't know how to make it work. Where you have now two characters working for redemption. She's a higher being and da-da-da-da. Like, I just think that they felt unclear. She had no voice. And for me, I felt like Cordelia is truly the voice of a middle-aged white man named David Greenwald. And he embodied her. He championed her. And he went over and show ran Angel. And then he didn't feel valued by the network or by the studio. So he left. And then Tim Minear stepped in and he was show running. And we were still hanging in. We were still doing great. And I think then more changes. And then Serenity, um, not Serenity, Firefly Firefly happened. Yeah. And so then the shows were growing and growing. And so then the talent pool was being stretched and placed in other places. And so then the redhead stepchild that was Angel got sort of forgotten. And I don't mean to insult the people that were there because I know they tried their best and I know that they put blood, sweat, and tears into the job as well. But Cordelia suffered. Yeah. She suffered without Tim. She suffered without David Grimmel. And those were the two people that understood her best. I think one of the best seasons for Cordelia was season three, you know, that whole Pylea thing. Like she shined. Like that was her season, you know? And I remember getting a call from Joss and David because I always had an acting teacher that would coach me every single day on set because I had such high anxiety and that I would just run lines, run lines, run lines, run lines. So I wouldn't like panic and forget, which I did. And it was to the frustration of everyone. So I try to minimize that to a max. I want to ask you a question about a rumor. And if you don't want to respond, you say no, and then we'll cut it out completely. (laughs) But there have long been rumors that your pregnancy somehow impacted the decision to have Cordelia exit the show from the writer's room, that they were not equipped to write around your pregnancy. Is that ever something that you've heard? I mean, it was 100% not expected. I don't know why it wasn't expected, you know, like when you're a 30 year old woman and you're been on a show for seven years and you've been with the same partner for like five and you do have sex when you're in your 30s, (laughs) you know, like that it's plausible a person could get pregnant and that it shouldn't be just something that could, you know, but I think that the news, despite my efforts to reach the powers that be to inform them of my news, it happened over the summer when I found out before we went back to work and at the end of July, every season started around my birthday, either the 22nd or the 23rd of July. I had tried fervently to get a hold of people. I had my people contact the powers that be. I contacted them personally. I just did not get the response. And then finally, I got a call to you know meet the powers that be in an office. And I was let know how it was fucking everything up for the season. So that's 100% accurate. What's so odd about hearing that story is to think that if something like that were to ever happen today, how that would not be at all accepted. I I, I want to believe that that to be the case. It wasn't supposed to be accepted then. And to be honest with you, I was so afraid to say the truth for fear of those things that we fear. You know, I, I had a little baby to feed. Yeah. And I was a primary caretaker of my family. So like I couldn't afford to say my truth. I couldn't afford to talk about the way that I was treated. I imagine that had to be so difficult. Beyond. I don't know that my career has ever really overcome it, to be honest. So you come back in season five for one last episode. That was kind of going to be a proper send off of the character. I imagine, especially given the circumstances you just explained, it must have been a little bit strange to be back on that set. What was that like for you to, I mean, I imagine on the one hand, gratifying to have the closure, but also sounds like it was a complex work environment. Not with the castmates, not at all. 
and not with some of the people that, you know, could talk to me about it. And then in the end, I found out later and listen, it's not lost on me how well an actor is paid, but I learned later that I was the lowest paid actress in primetime television. And I don't know if that's bad agenting or if that is just like the machine that is, you're not enough, you're not good enough, you create these issues, you have anxiety, you, you know, have to have a coach on set. You know, I was in a sense, and I'm not disagreeing on this, that I was challenging in those areas, but I was always made to feel though that I was also very worth it. So it was always sort of like this, oh my God, you're this huge talent and you know we want to do everything to make it possible for you to be your best and America loves you and you're awesome. And then at the same time, when it came time to talk about my paycheck, it was like, you're a problem. You know, you cost us this, you cost... And so it was always like this building up to knock you down. You know, it was always something like that going on. And it was very disruptive to me as an artist, as you know, a person. And then now as a new mother, you know, I had a lot to traverse and navigate as skillfully as possible. But back in the nineties, you really didn't necessarily have a lot of voice. You kind of, as a woman, don't even (laughs) in this administration, if it's not made clear, like I'm, I still feel like, yes, there is progression in the movement of women's right to work, women's right to have fair pay and all of these things. There's been tremendous exposure of the undermining that takes place by men in powerful positions where they make you feel like you're extra. Men can be a handful also and be fucking extras and doing drugs on the weekend and like showing up fucked up or whatever the case may be, you are still less than. And I still feel like, yes, there's been progress, but we're not there yet. We're just not there yet. And it was a lot. It was a lot to manage at the time. I do my best. I have done my best to look at my part in all of that, to see things from a production point of view. And I was not perfect. And I think I was doing my best to cope under a tremendous amount of duress. Having a baby should not equate to not having a job the following year. Lots of productions did deal with it. And Aaron Spelling was sued for firing someone. That had happened. I knew what I was sitting on could be potentially explosive, but I was I felt like I had no agency. There was just nothing I could do about it. Do you feel like for an actress today that was your age at the time, do you feel like she would have and I, I understand this is hypothetical, but do you think that given the shift in climate, and I don't know how effective that shift is, you would know a lot better than I would. Do you think that an actress today would have those same difficulties in dealing with a situation like that? I think no matter what job you have in the workplace, every woman faces that unspoken reality that there are going to be, you're going to pay. You're going to pay for intrinsically just being a woman, (laughs) you know, just like having a reproductive system and to be able to have a baby is a problem. I am a very talented person, but I also have a very strong work ethic. And I think too, that somehow wasn't enough to sustain my job. 